Hey, hey, hey! The New Year kicked off with three skier trigger slab avalanches. Slides broke about a foot deep on steep northerly slopes of around 6,300 feet. Two of these were D2 in size, enough debris to bury or injure a person. Two slides failed at the 1222 interface and, interestingly, well below ridgelines. A strong wind event ushered in the weekend with plenty of transported snow. Later that evening, an atmospheric river soaked interior Glacier Park with two inches of water in about 40 hours. Around half that amount fell in the Whitefish Range while the swan was left high and dry. Occasional light snow combined with elevated wind speeds kept wind slab as our number one avalanche problem throughout the week. A widespread layer of buried surface ore was found in the Swan Range, which may be responsible for two wind slabs beneath the Swan Crest. In the Northern Whitefish Range, riders intentionally triggered fresh wind slabs in inconsequential terrain. They also spotted a persistent slab avalanche that either released at the 1222 interface or just above on a buried layer of surface ore. The winds kept a blowing resulting in cornice falls that triggered a handful of surface slabs in the eastern Flathead Range. The good news is that these bombs of the backcountry did not step down to a buried weak layer. However, at week's end, observers found a reactive layer of surface horror in this same region. Heading into the weekend, riders should take into account several generations of wind slabs on leeward and cross-loaded slopes. The low likelihood, high consequence persistent slab problem remains a concern with the potential to trigger slides on buried weak snow around crusts or on well-preserved layers of surface ore. Visit flatheadavalanche.org for more details.